Hello sailors, it's Tuesday the 11th of October 2022. Um, I've been able to recently post a couple videos that uh, just covered uh, taking the boat 3D for a dry test fit and this video is an update. Um, I was able to get the boat epoxied together. That's the bulkhead, stem, transom, and the hull sides so far epoxied together. Um, it was quite a production but uh, it feels very sturdy, looks pretty good, um, and is, was able to get it to pull straight. Um, however, there's plenty of lessons learned that I'm happy to share here, and we can walk through some of that. Uh, before going out to the boat, just wanted to take a look at the plans here and discuss how I got the angles for the, uh, the bevel on the cleats. And so on each of the bulkheads, on the bottom generally and on the sides, except for bulkhead three, which is special. Um, you have the cleats that join it to the uh, this whole side or the whole bottom eventually. And so for calculating the bevel angles I needed on that, because they're not 90 degree joins, basically aside from, it looks like roughly bulkhead three, um, I needed to calculate that angle. And so I have a large print of the plans, which is, you know, uh, the scales kept um, X and Y on this. And so basically I just took a straight edge and tried to do my best to draw a tangent line at the joining point between the cleat and the hull side. And I don't expect that you can see the details <laughs> writing on this necessarily. And then I also drew a parallel, a line parallel to the center line of the vessel. And so this gives me a triangle that comes together at the bevel. And so a little trigonometry, an arc sine here, for example, and uh, you know, arc sine of the uh, the length of the opposite and the, over the hypotenuse side you know, will give you the angle that you have um, at that joint. Um, these are all really fairly close to 90 degrees. Um, they're not too varied. Um, the biggest excursion I got was you know, about 18 degrees I'd measured off of 90, so 108 degrees uh, for joining. But uh, All the angles I got were a little big for what I actually wanted to join. If I'd used slightly shallower angles closer to 90 degrees, um, I would have needed a little less fiddling and a little less uh, epoxy fill on some of these. It is complicated because the angle you have at the top of the boat may not actually necessarily be the angle at the bottom of the boat, um, just because of the curves and the shape of some of these panels and the curvature of that and the stem. Um, it's all pretty close, um, but the takeaway there is you know, if I did it again, I would use shallower angles closer to 90 degrees, and I just worked then with, you know, like um, a portable belt sander and, you know, bring them into line um, more that way instead of filling back. We can take my cheat sheet and then walk out to the boat and then talk about the rest of the things out there. So here's the boat all epoxied up. Got a pretty good alignment on it right down the center lines. Uh, using you know one by two uh, pieces here you know, as diagonals to help keep it in shape. And that's done pretty well. Uh, some general notes here um, on bulkhead number three up there. Um, I added some commentary, just a little text box in a previous video. Um, I used alignment blocks for bulkhead number three. This one doesn't have side cleats on it. And the alignment blocks I used on the port side uh, did very well for helping align it. Um, in the mock-up, those you know kept it pretty nicely vertical and I was able to do the starboard side as well without those blocks. In hindsight, especially for bulkhead three, I'd encourage you to use uh, just some blocks to help make sure that you've kind of got a slot for bulkhead three on both sides. Um, bulkhead three is one of those things I will always know it is ever so slightly out of vertical and I'll know that it really is not in a place that's going to horribly affect anything but it's uh, one of those slight imperfections and having those blocks on both sides would have helped. Don Elliott talks about in his building guide um, using you know, wire nails as indexing uh, pins basically for building and putting this together. Um, beyond just a pin, you do need something to really hold this 
in together. And so I was using uh, short little like drywall screws. Um, they worked well to hold everything together and I thought they'd work well for indexing, but that wasn't the case. And so having some type of like pinning system like he suggests would probably be useful and make this a lot less stressful. Uh, generally was able to get everything pretty well set, but uh, that just took a little extra time. I do suggest having an extra pair of hands available for this, certainly. I was fortunate and had some help with this, um, but your helper might have some long periods of not doing anything, so a, a chair and a book or something is probably, <laughs> probably good, and treat him to dinner afterwards. Um, let's see here. I uh, also learned I need can thicken the epoxy, especially when working on vertical surfaces, much more than I have before. Um, I have a little bit of slump in the fillets, but I don't really see anything uh, too structurally concerning. Um, it looks like very solid joints there. But uh, you know, a lot of the epoxy joints I've been doing before were all on a, a horizontal flat surface on a bench until I came to this point. And so, you know, just with the slower hardener, and uh, the vertical surfaces, I did get some slumpy movement of the epoxy. So there'll be some cleanup and sanding related with that. Um, you might see at the top of a couple of the panels a little bit of epoxy gap, which is somewhat intentional because that's where I'm gonna be cutting out for the shear logs. So I wasn't really too concerned about packing it at the absolute top of these panels. Uh, the stem came together really well. Um, there's some sanding to do up here for sure, and uh, like I mentioned in a previous video, it's a little bit proud, um, but I think it'll do pretty well once it's all sanded and kind of fared into shape. Um, as far as actually pulling the boat into alignment, um, you know, I have a jig here which is made out of two by fours and uh, some pretty heavy duty casters that lock, which allows me to move the boat just one person in and out of my garage. Uh, for storage and then working on it out here. I have a large, <laughs> large kind of a canvas and plastic um, drop cloth that I put underneath when I'm epoxying so I don't get epoxy everywhere or paint everywhere for other projects. And so rolling the boat onto that when I'm doing epoxy work or other messy work is pretty good. Um, and so when pulling the boat true, you can do things like add clamps to the two by fours. You can even screw down some blocks to help with that as you might be able to see along there. But those are all really kind of temporary. What you really do want to do, and I think Don Elliott also mentions this, and it might even be in uh, Matt's original plans, is you know, make sure that you have some reasonably strong, but you know, strips that you can just use as diagonals to keep the shape of the boat. Um, additionally, I can add these back in. I have the uh, cabin sole pieces that I can add in there um, to keep it in shape as well as I'm working on it. Um, but even without those, I was able to square it up pretty well here. Uh, squaring up was a bit stressful. It felt like it wasn't going to happen until I got a couple of these diagonals in and then it just clicked. You know, after you know, maybe two and maybe three of these were in, really the shape was pretty well defined and suddenly it went from thinking I'd never have this uh, lined up straight to everything was looking beautiful. So it does take some wrangling, it does take a little bit of strength there, um, but ultimately it came together rather quickly once I started uh, getting the shape uh, nailed down so to speak. Uh, the next step for me will be working on the shear logs here. Uh, it's going to be a couple of table saw cuts. I think it's from five quarter stock, which I have here in full lengths. I've read some warnings that, you know, the sh I don't know if it's so much the shear logs, but the chine logs especially can be a bit of a bear to fit to shape. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the next steps are basically going to be making the shear logs from my five quarter stock here. Um, taking a little bit of a uh, sample piece of that to actually cut the notches in these corners uh, at the top of the bulkheads and then fitting that in as well as you know also a notch up here in the stem for that um i'll be working then on uh, just fitting those shear logs gluing them in place and then doing the epoxy glue up at these tops here as well and then from then moving on to the uh, chine logs i'll probably try to do a simple video once i've got the shear logs done and that figured out 
uh, before moving on to the chine logs. Um, some people laminate their chine logs in place because apparently they tend to split. Um, we'll see how that goes. I think that's all I have for this update. Take care.